Today's scripture reading comes from the New Testament, Hebrews 11.29-12.2. through 12, By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, because mighty in war put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today we take up close to where we left off last week in chapter 11 of Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Paul is teaching these new Christians about the power of faith, the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. By faith, the saints of old followed God's call to run the race set before them. Even though they encountered hardship, persecution, swords, wild animals, mocking, flogging, and more. Last week we read about the faith of Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Jacob. Today the lectionary skips the verses about Joseph and Moses and picks up with verse 29 talking about how by faith the Israelites were able to cross on dry land that parted the raging Red Sea. By faith, God's people conquered kingdoms, administered justice, quenched raging fires, shut the mouths of lions, and more. They were commended for their faith, even though some of them, like Rahab the prostitute, had lived rather unholy lives, prior to the works of their faith. Their faith was pleasing to God, and God was not ashamed to be their God. 
However, the epistle to the Hebrews says that these saints did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better. Last week we read that God's people knew that they were foreigners, strangers on this earth, and they desired a better country. They looked forward to the holy city whose architect and builder was God. Today, in verse 35, we read about saints who were tortured but refused to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. God had a better plan. God always has a better plan than anything we can ask for, long for, or dream up. We just have to trust that God is in control and that the Father Almighty always knows better than we do. Verse 40 is particularly interesting. It says, God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Apart from us, Paul wrote. Not only was he writing about the us that included him, those early Christians who started the church and spread the gospel on missionary journeys, but he was also writing about us, about you, and about me, and about this little church on the bluff. Even then, we were part of God's plan and inheritors of something better. Amy Peeler, a so associate professor of theology at Wheaton College, explains it this way. Quote, God looked ahead and made provision for something better. Something better that concerns not just the faithful of the past, but also the faithful of the present, the author and his readers. The forebears in faith cannot reach that place of perfection without the present generation of the faithful. One of Abraham's promises involved a multitude of descendants until everyone joins the party, Hebrews 12.22, until everyone resides in the household, Hebrews 3, 6, the promise remains unobtained. Run, faithful, run. And so the baton passes to them. The author paints a sense of the close of a race. As runners enter the stadium, they're surrounded by the crowd all around them cloud of witnesses both proclaims the story of their own faith and expectantly waits for those running to endure in theirs. Get rid of everything that would trip you up, the author commands, with the cloud around you. Keep your eyes before you on the ultimate runner, the one who created the race of faith and the only one who has reached its perfect end. Jesus endured an excruciating death and did not, for the shame of his reproach, squelch the joy that kept him going. This was the same joyful promise to which all God's children look forward, residing with God and his people forever. Jesus is there now at God's right hand. And through his prayers, Hebrews 7.25, he not only cheers the church militant, but sustains them along the way. End quote. So we are an important part of the race of the faithful. All those saints of old who from their labors rest have their eyes on us and are counting on us to race and finish well. Let us run with perseverance, then, the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. God has set a race before us, a life to live, a job to do, a mission to perform by faith. The faith of the Old Testament Hebrew, Hebrews was an anchor cast into the future. They were content 
to greet their promises from afar and let their faith rest in God, whom they trusted to fulfill God's promises. God's answer to their faith was the Savior who alone could provide the perfect access through his perfect sacrifice, who alone could taste death for everyone. Yet this faith also implied the faithfulness of followers to come. Abraham's faith would have been in vain if his descendants had not entered the promised land. The faith of the other heroes would have been thwarted if the readers of the epistle did not prove faithful. Apart from us, even, they cannot be made perfect. Their completion depends on us. To the roster of the faithful in this chapter of Hebrews has been added countless names of faithful followers whose perfection also depends on our fidelity. We can fulfill their faith or we can barter away the priceless heritage they bought with their own blood, sweat, and tears. Which will it be? Will we run the race God has set and run it well? We won't run it alone, you know. That's for sure. We are surrounded by that great cloud of witnesses who by their faith and by the record of their lives are still speaking and encouraging us to trust God and look to Jesus. We also are surrounded by our brothers and sisters in Christ, our teammates in ministry. We can urge each other onto the victory. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God's message for us all today is that if we look up to Christ for strength and look to each other for support, we can run with perseverance the race God has set before us. Isaiah 41, 31 says that, quote, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We can win the victory hand in hand as long as we persevere and don't give up. We know how important perseverance is in anything we seek to accomplish. It's imperative in all of our endeavors to stick with the program, to hang in there, to hang tough, to keep trying however we want to word it. Remember what happened to the overconfident hare in Aesop's fable. Napping during the race just won't win you the gold. The point for us this morning is that we need to keep working for God, even when we get tired or discouraged or jealous or unhappy, even when we feel unappreciated or misunderstood even when things are changing and we don't understand why and we don't think we like where we're headed. Even when people we love have COVID and even when we have COVID. We need to lay aside every weight, everything that could slow us down in doing God's work every doubt and fear and grudge and mistrust and every sin that clings so closely. We need to toss them all aside, just as the Bloomsday Runners toss their heavy jackets and sweatshirts into the trees before they start the race, lest they be dragged down by the extra baggage or overheated as the race goes on. We need to unencumber our souls, as did Jesus who emptied himself of all but love. We need to get ready. We need to get strong for the race by committing to the spiritual disciplines of prayer, Bible study, fasting, public worship, and Christian service. We need to be serious about commitment, like the Apostle Paul, who wrote to the church at Corinth, 
I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. Eugene H. Peterson's modern translation of 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27 goes like this. You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs, one wins. Run to win. All good athletes train hard. They do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You're after one that's gold eternally. I don't know about you, but I'm running for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else about it and missing out myself. Well, how about you? Surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses and looking to Jesus, are you ready to run with perseverance as individuals and as God's church? Are you ready to run to win? You will face some hurdles, no doubt. You may even fall along the way. In the movie Chariots of Fire, young Harold Abrahams, a champion sprinter, had just lost his first ever defeat. After the race, he sat alone, pouting in the bleachers. When his girlfriend came over and tried to console him, he bellowed, if I can't win, I won't run. She wisely replied, if you don't run, you can't win. Abrahams went on to win the 1924 Olympic gold medal in the 100-meter run. If we don't run with perseverance, the race that God has set before us with our eyes fixed firmly on Jesus, then we can't win the prize of eternal life. May Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, keep us on track until we reach the finish line where our victory and the victory of all those who went before us will be victory in him, victory for him. Part of that something better scenario God planned for us all along. Hallelujah. The Amen.